Welcome to the third in my documentaries of how to use Cubase 5 or any of the Cubases with the Studio Connect 48 and 192 kilohertz sample rate. A uh, question was raised at earlier with regards to the quality using the older control panel with the newer firmware for the Studio Connect 48. Okay, we'll just have a quick look at my uh, my system. Uh, go Windows 7 Ultimate here. Um, it's the full Ultimate um, Windows experience here, 4.4. You can see here uh, Core 2 GUIs T7700 at 2.4 gigahertz, 4 gig of RAM, 32-bit operating system. If we go into the Windows experience, you'll see here that I get fairly reasonable processor RAM for its day. Anything that's letting me down is the graphics. However, you will notice here that the uh, disk transfer rate is significantly higher. It's actually an SSD drive, solid state drive. I was getting a, a record of about 5.8 with a standard 7800 2.5 inch SATA from Seagate. Uh, SSD is the way of the future. I would recommend getting one. Anyway, now if we go, uh, the only thing I've done to my system is disable the Wi Fi when I uh, pull up the DPC latency checker. You can see there that I'm getting fairly reasonable. It works fine. As you can see, we've got the TC near control panel here. I'll just show you a few of the things. We've got the sample rate currently at 44.1. I've actually got a really long latency at the moment. That's not because of the fact that it's 44.1 and then that I have some horrible buffer setting. Uh, it's because uh, as soon as I go up to 192, that will quarter in size. So we go from 23 seconds down to 6 seconds. So, uh, that's the reason for it, it's just easier to do it at this point in time rather than do it again a bit later. If we go to the setup menu, yeah, there's nothing outstanding here. Got the headphones on three and four. But if we go back to the system menu here, uh, what causes Cubase to stay in 192, even though it's only designed to go into 96 kilohertz, is this prevent from changing sample rate, WDM and ASIO. So if you select that, WDM and ASIO, it will force whatever software you are using into 192 regardless of its ability. Uh, the Cubase uses the same audio engine as Nuendo and will happily record at that rate. So why don't I just, uh, I've got a little thing here in the background. Uh, it was just from a previous demo. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of redundant pieces of equipment here that aren't actually switched on, but uh, they're being listened to and gotten ready. We'll just ready them to record. And yep, as you can see, so if we go now, we go back to the TC near control panel. And by the way, I'm using 2.1.1 revision R. 2332. It is only this version of the control panel which allows you to do this. So, why don't I just quit yammering and change the sample rate? So, if I change it to 192 kilohertz, Okay, you should be hearing me again now. The one thing I failed to point out before is that uh, in switching to 192, all of your VST connections change. But because I've set up some presets, it makes life a lot easier. And of course, you won't hear anything during that section. Oh, that section of the uh, the recording because. Uh, there's nothing there to hear but you should be hearing me well now certainly on there I'll just check this so now we've got it well we're all back 
So you need to uh, change your inputs and outputs and also your headphone. It's best off using the studio for the headphones. Um, when using the 192, for some reason it fails to remember on the TC near control panel. Just while I'm doing that, I might as well just add another input. Add a bus, stereo bus. Eight and nine, there we go, nine and ten. And then the right inputs. So now if I and we'll put it in as the S one so I won't actually have it uh doing anything, but uh they're not actually switched on, they won't be playing anything, but we will be recording from the analog inputs. Uh the DRV three thousand is a uh um, recording unit. Uh I'll also need to set up a separate return channel at an audio track stereo and we will set this up as the return for the group group return so I can record that as well I don't need to monitor it, I just need to record it so that's uh, good to go I think so let's just check um, checking the project uh, as shown in the previous demonstration this sample rate goes to minus when it can't display the current sample rate uh, you're hearing it quite well at the moment so what you hear coming in and what you hear going out is actually being processed uh, the one thing I haven't shown you at the moment is the fact that uh, VST performance nothing special it's hovering it's not doing a great deal but I'm only listening to the PPG so anyway well, why don't I just now start the recording. And um, you'll hear me uh, talking over the top. That's uh, actually what's being recorded. So I just changed the instruments around in their sequence. You can hear the actual return of the uh, return of the uh, audio and uh, I'll just punch it out at the end of this rather than move around again so here we go one, two, that'll do ok so uh, you can now see what's been recorded uh, you heard me talking over the top, so if I just click, go back to the beginning of that part, um, and all I'll do, I'll just move this down. Uh, I don't want to monitor these channels. Oop. Might just monitor my channel, but we won't monitor these ones. So now you'll be able to hear it. Um, I might just punch my direct microphone in and out as we go along. So yeah, oh no, you can hear me, how about that? You'll hear me uh, talking over the top, and now you'll hear me again, so uh, actually what's being recorded, and this is live, so welcome. So I just changed the instruments around in their sequence, just to liven it up, that is, you can hear the actual return of the, uh, return of the, Audio. Seems to be working well, but you know, and uh, I'll just punch it out at the end of this rather than move around again. So here we go. One, two. Sounded pretty clear to me. I mean, I didn't hear any clicks, any pops, or anything, so uh, well, it was harder to figure out the best way to make this recording. Uh, a few things along the way that I had to remember, th such as quadrupling the uh, buffer size um, and using the studio for the headphone return rather than the uh, uh, TC near panel. So other than that, it seems to work fine to me. So uh, unless you've got any other questions, consider this done. <laughs>